The magical kingdom of Clyrode summons hundreds of heroes from other worlds every year to fight in their war against the Dark One and his army of powerful demons. Benaza is one of those heroes, summoned from the royal capital Paluma, but something's not right. Benaza is only an average merchant. He has no magic, no fighting ability, and his stats are abysmal. Worse, a mishap leaves him unable to return home. Rejected as a hero and stranded in another world, abandoned to the far reaches of the kingdom by a cruel king who just wants him gone, Banaza's fate looks pretty bleak. But what will happen once the failed hero candidate finds himself with super cheap powers once he hits level 2? The story begins in another world. A man is using a whip to force demi-humans to work. Our main character Banaza is working at this merchant guild. People around him are seeing him as a weirdo because he is giving money to a demi-human. This demi-human guy said that he appreciated the offer, but we're demi-humans, you know. But Benaza doesn't care about that. He just knows that he will pay whoever works. Assistant Quinn comes and says once Bazana makes an offer, he won't take no for answer. Go on and have a nice meal together. The demi-human told his friends to stop and thank Benaza. They are extremely grateful to a boss like Benaza for always being kind to them. However, the traders hate his actions. Banaza wondered, why does it matter if you are human or demi-human? Can't we all just get along, no matter what we are? Quinn also agrees with Bazana's point of view, but there aren't many in the capital who feel that way. Suddenly, Bazana's body glowed, and he disappeared. He was teleported to another world. Someone is saying that the summoning of the 198th hero candidate is a success. A priest welcomes him to the magical kingdom of Clyrod and calls him hero candidate. Bazana still didn't understand what was going on and he thought there was some mistake in calling him hero candidate. He tries to explain that he is a merchant called Benaza. The priest said that to assist in our prolonged battle against the Dark Army, we summon potential heroes from other worlds in accordance with our ancient traditions, in hopes that they will fight the Dark Army for us. I will now assess your abilities. A beast girl brought an orb and told Bazana to place his hand on it. Bazana was still confused so the girl helped her. The priest explains that in exchange for returning to level 1 after being summoned to our world, candidates receive divine blessings from our gods. These are powers that no ordinary person can acquire simply by training. We call this the divine revelation. That is this world's written language, but Bazana can read it with no problem. The beast girl was shocked because there is no divine revelation. These are the stats of a completely ordinary man. Bazana was embarrassed and said that he tried to explain that he was just a merchant. The priest also doesn't know why Bazana doesn't have divine revelation. The magicians thought they had failed again. Bazana could see they were disappointed. He asked, if that's the case, could you send me back to my world? Suddenly, he heard cheers next door. It turned out that a hero had been successfully summoned. Someone has appeared who possesses powers worthy of the legendary hero. All of his skills had the highest stats even though he was level 1. Even the maid at Bazana's side ran towards him. The yellow head saw Bazana's status and understood the problem. He knows that he himself has been chosen to be the hero to save this world. A servant immediately ran to report the good news to the king and no one cared about the presence of a failed hero like Bazana. The king was very excited to welcome the blonde hero. They are having a celebration party and Bazana comes out complaining that no one listens to him. The magical kingdom of Clyrod, he has never heard of it. Is this really a different world? In any case, he needs to get them to send him back home. In the evening, the soldiers put him on a carriage and took him away from the capital. The king said that the gate through which you were summoned has already closed. It can't be opened again. This shocked Bizana. The inability to return him to his original world is a failure on their nation's part. That being the case, they granted him special permission to take up residence in the Delaveza Forest to the north and live out his life there. However, he is strictly forbidden to speak of this blunder to anyone. Bazana wanted to ask the coachman something, but he said he was told not to talk to Bazana. Bazana said that I'm from very far away, so I don't know this can try well. I was hoping you could tell me all about it. Bazana asked, are you in a slave contract with the king? Makes the coachman not understand. Bazana explains that in his old world, contracts like that were common between humans and demi-humans. The coachman laughed and thought that Bazana came from a pretty horrible place. He said that my pay might not be all that high, but we're not slaves at all. In this country, it doesn't matter who's a human and who's a demi-human. This made Bazana quite excited. He asked about where he was going, the delays of forest. The coachman reminded him that we must not talk and close the window. Bazana remembers that they were saying something about a dark one. But maybe this world isn't really so bad. After a 20-day journey, they arrived at the Delaves of Forest. The coachman sent Bazana a bag from the king. This is a bottomless bag. 
it should have enough money and food in it to last you for a while, before leaving. The coachman said that rumor has it the dark army lurks around these parts. This surprised Bizana. The coachman advised Bizana, if you don't want to die, get away from here fast. Bizana thanked the coachman for bringing him here, but he didn't know where to run to. He uses the bag and finds that it works the same as the bottomless bags in his old world. The thing he needs right now is armaments. He took out a sword. Looks nice, but it's just cheap junk. A few slimes appeared. This creature was very gentle, but they suddenly rushed to attack him. He immediately slashed them to death, but he was shocked when he saw the heavily damaged sword. The system announced that his level had increased to level 2. He guesses it went up because he killed some monsters, but he wonders what does this smark mean. Notification system you can now turn on voice guidance. Vezana feels great because he was just wanting someone to talk to. System voice is enabled. The system says that with your increased level, you have acquired the following magic spells. You can activate them without using the windows. Location tracking, monster luring, and forced recovery spells have been applied to your bottomless bag. Vezana realized that's why those slimes attacked him. And this weapon's useless, so he guesses someone's telling him to just hurry up and die. The system asks him, remove the spells that have been applied to your bag. Bazana immediately accepted. Spells have been removed. Bazana wonders if they use magic that's this easy to get rid of. What were they even trying to do? Right now, he needs to find a safe place where he can protect himself. Warning system the Delaves of Forest is contaminated with a high concentration of Molysium. Molysium is the generic term for liquid or gaseous substance, emitted and exhausted by demons. It causes serious harm to humanoid races. The system asks, purify the forest. This spell will consume one-third of your magic. Bazana said that it even matter how much magic he has. That's fine with him. The system begins the purification. All Molysium in the forest has been purified. Although Bazana was surprised, he did not realize that he himself had huge magical energy. The system notifies his level has increased continuously. Meanwhile, the eldest princess felt that her father's actions were too cruel. She said that the hero candidate couldn't return to his world due to a mistake on our part, and now you've driven him out to the Delaves of Forest. It's rumored that the Dark Army has set up its frontline base there. The king says, he was just a piece of trash that couldn't be our hero. A magician comes to announce that we have found evidence that the highest holy magic of all, purification, was just used. This made the king happy, and thought that the golden-haired hero just set out to subjugate the Dark One. To think he's acquired such high-level holy magic already. Truly a once-in-a-century talent. But the magician said that the purification spell was not used in the south, where the hero is headed. It was in a forest far to the north. Meanwhile, Bazana was surprised because he had reached level 367 after purifying the forest. He still wonders that weird symbol is still there too. Guess he will turn off the level up notifications, they are just confusing him. He asked the system, how much magic do I have left? The system restored his magical energy in seconds. This makes he guess us his magic capacity really isn't all that great. He doesn't even know how much his lame magic activated purified this place. He's been banned from living in town, so he doesn't know what to do. Notification system, shapeshift magic is recommended. This skill can help no one recognize him anymore. Please choose your desired gender. He chose the female gender, and he really turned into a girl. He chose another character and was satisfied with this one. Now he can rest assured that no one will recognize him as Benaza. Teleportation magic notification system recommended. He immediately used it. He teleports to a city. In his old world, that was a sped only really powerful sorcerers could use. He guesses it's different here. He tried using teleportation to teleport to his former world. But it doesn't work. Anyway, he's gonna need to make some money if he has to live in this world. He wonders if they have guilds here, too. Even if he jins a merchant's guild, it'll be hard to register without knowing anyone here. It'd help if he could find an adventurer's guild where he could do some monster hunting or cargo transporting quests. The system says that proceed straight ahead to find the Clyrod Castle Town Adventurer's Guild. He went to the Adventurer Guild and registered as a member. The receptionist said that as your rank rises, you can earn better rewards and accept tougher quests. Those registered with the guild are eligible to receive reserve funds and compensation. Bazana sees that seems like guilds here work pretty much the same as they did in his world. He used the name Fleo to register. He was on the spot, so he blurted out the name of a dog he once had. The receptionist gave him his registration information. He wants to make a lot of money quickly, but he probably can't earn any big rewards at his level. 
he heard a little girl asking an adventurer to escort her to the Delaves of Forests. Almost all adventurers refused her request. Rumor has it the Dark Army has its frontline base in that forest. No amount of money would convince them to go there. A punitive force will be sent out soon enough. But the girl explained that her family lives near the Delaves of Forests, so she wants to go help them. Fleo saw that and wanted to help the girl, making her very happy. He said that he could instantly take her to the Delaves of Forest using teleportation magic. This shocked the surrounding adventurers because teleportation was a high-level spell. However, Fleo thinks it is for a beginner. Balirasa of the Royal Knights walks in and tells Fleo to stay away from that girl. Balirasa thinks Fleo is a freak because teleportation magic is only used by legendary sorcerers. The girl's teammates thought he was a pervert, a kidnapper, or a weirdo. They took him to an alley and told him to perform teleportation magic. If he tries something funny, they will do what needs to be done. Fleo immediately used teleportation magic to teleport them to the Delaves of Forest, shocking them. Using teleportation over such a great distance, the girl asked him if he was a great sorcerer of the highest order. Fleo says I'm just a rookie adventurer who can use a bit of magic. Valirasa knelt down to apologize to Fleo for her rudeness. So are the other girls. The little girl wonders the Melissium in the forest is gone. She was sure this forest was enveloped in a thick layer of Melissium. She doesn't even sense any magic beasts. Fleo intended to explain to them but was prevented by the system. The system says it is dangerous to and from a demon that you use purification. Turns out there's a demon here. Balirasa tells Fleo to stay back. She pointed the sword at the little girl. 